Look at what we have here. A quad system. Now, up until a week ago, I'd never heard of this company, but apparently they are top end, really, really high quality audio equipment. So Quad goes all the way back to 1936. It was started by Peter Walker. They were originally based in London, but they got bombed out in the Second World War and moved to Huntington, which is in Cambridgeshire. Quad stands for Quality Unit Amplifier Domestic. They used to use make uh, public address systems, and then as the demand for home audio increased, they went over to that market. And I think these are renowned for being amazing quality. You know, people that are really into their audio will know about these things. And uh, I think they are very well respected. So price-wise, these are the prices from 1991. I don't know when these ones are from because they range from like 1982 to 1995. But the prices in 1991 I found on the internet were for this one here, £336. That's in money back then. This one here was £367. And this amplifier down here was 295 And the little rack at the back was £55. So all serious money. So add all that together, and this setup here would have set you back £1,053 in 1991. So in today's money, you're looking at, put that into Google, you're looking at £2,892. So uh, yeah, serious amount, and they still go for very good money now. I did find this one for ranging from £100 upwards, these are £200 upwards, and these are £200 upwards as well. So on uh, this one, this is like the radio side of things. This one is where you can select between your radio, disc will be record player, you've got your CD and your tape, and then this is the amplifier here. So I think this is a pre-amplifier and this is an amplifier. Now I will say, I've never owned this equipment before. This was given to me by my friend John. It was given to him by his friend Rob and it used to belong to Rob's dad. So Rob's tried plugging it in and it's not working. So he said to John, would I be interested in looking at it? And of course I would be interested in looking at it because I think it's going to make for an interesting video because the device itself is high end and interesting. So uh, I'm not an audio guy whatsoever. I've never even used one of these, not alone attempted to repair one. Terminology will be wrong, but I will do my very best to get it working. So it's a kind of very weird setup at the back and if you have a look you have like a you have your inputs and outputs so there's power in and power out on each of them and already I seen that there wasn't enough leads to get them all wired up so I did have to buy this lead here these are like these kind of kettle ones from a male to female but what I did is individually I just plugged in the main power lead into each of them and the top one turns on the bottom one turns on but the middle one the radio doesn't so what I need to do is we need to take this one out here and find out why it's not powering on. So I'll bring it over to the blue mat and I'll show you what I mean. When I plug in each of them, you will see that when I turn it on here, they do light up, but uh, this one looks like it's completely dead. So hopefully by the end, we might be able to get some audio out of it and get this, uh, get this radio working. That's the plan anyway, but we'll see how it goes. Now I found out since filming that apparently this system here hasn't worked in over 20 years and unfortunately Rob's dad has since passed on. So uh, Rob would like to see it working again because I presume it's gonna bring back some fond memories. The dad was apparently a GP. So right now, this is going into the middle one here. So let me just show you because the middle one's not the one that's not working. But if I bring it up here, you see it'll go in here and then it's daisy chain from here down to here. So these are input, output, input, output, input, output. So if I get my new lead and plug that into the input here and the output here, then it should go in here from the, the AC in, from here to here, and then through here to here. But watch, let me get rid of this one here. Nothing is happening on the middle one. And then we'll plug it in directly and I'll show you that. So I'm just gonna plug it in here. So you can see here, light here, you can see that that's on. And you can see a light here's on, and this changes. But look, this one isn't doing anything. Right? So you might think it might be just a lead, but let's just turn them off. And let's put the lead straight into it. So we know the lead's working. 
so this is the main lead here. If we plug it straight into this one here, it still won't do anything. That's one fully home. Now, obviously, I don't know if the top and bottom are actually working, but the light's coming on. But right now, this is the, you know, this is a no power fault on the radio. So let's try to get this middle section out and let's see if we can find out what's wrong with it. All right, so we're unplugged, so it should be safe to work on. There might be capacitors in here that still have energy, so I've got to be careful of that. But I can see a screw here and a screw here. Maybe that will then allow the middle one to come out. All of this here looks like it's handmade. Right, I'm supporting the weight the other side. There we go, that's that one. And that one. Right, so now it should be a little bit lighter to work on. One at a time. It must be the amplifier down the bottom of all the weight in. Because look at the size of that heat sink here. The whole, the whole front is a massive heat sink, isn't it? Now I'm thinking it'd be quite nice if it was a problem with the power switch, but because we have mains going into it, I'm wondering is it going to be a problem with the actual power supply on the inside. Now I'm hoping that the inside of this is going to look nice. It will have a nice circuit board. Speaking about circuit boards, this video is sponsored by... PCB way. So you've made your dream electronics project on a breadboard and you want some high quality printed circuit boards then look no further than PCB way. They've got over a decade experience in the PCB industry. They have state of the art manufacturing facilities and they use the latest technology to produce high quality PCBs that meet your specifications. At PCB way they have a range of services including PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, flexible PCBs, high density PCBs, CNC machining and 3D printing. So I'd like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring the My Mate Vince channel and if you're looking for reliable printed circuit boards then check them out in the link in the description down below. Now let's see what's lurking inside this piece of audio greatness. Ooh. Right. Oh look at that. Do you know what that's from? The Rolls Royce for the uh, electronic seats. The, the memory thing. The battery for the memory thing. Oh, and you know what's happened? The same as on the Rolls Royce, leakage. Look there. So, I don't think that's the thing that's stopping it from working, but can you see we've got corrosion because that would have leaked. Because I've never seen one of those batteries before until I was looking at the Rolls Royce. If you haven't seen those videos, check them out. I honestly think you will enjoy them. It's just for some reason YouTube doesn't like pushing them to anybody. But yeah, that was on one of the seat ones. If you watch one of the seat ones, then you'll see that uh, I had to do some work on the... Uh, these are known for leaking and destroying the modules. And those modules, you can't even get anymore. And I think they were thousands anyway, even when you could get them. Right, okay, so really this looks very complicated. It's just chip after chip after chip. Uh, what we got here with the push button? So the push button goes all the way into here. Warning, high internal voltage, dangerous to unqualified persons. Uh-oh. Well, I'm going to have to get in there because I need to find out whether or not, I need to find out, you know, just the contacts on here to see if, for example, we have continuity when we press the, the switch in. But even if we fix that, there's going to be work that needs to be done here. Now, I've had this plugged in, so I've got to be careful in here because the capacitors may still be live, especially if there's a fault on it. They might not have discharged themselves. We might find a date in here somewhere as well. Because they did, when were they were in production. This was in production from 1982 to 1995, so 13 years, and they made 37,000 of them. Right, okay, well, this is a linear power supply, isn't it? Oh, I can see some bridge rectifiers down here, two bridge rectifiers. Why wouldn't we have two of them? Three, there's another one here. Okay. And this is, what's happening here? Is this just going straight onto the... So the live comes in here, power in, goes to the switch. Then the blue, oh, the blue goes to there and is linked to there and they're just linked across. Yeah, okay. Oh, of course, it's opposite because it's female and male. I was wondering why the blue there is connected to that side instead of the other side. Yeah. 
So if you plug it in, if this one's positive, then when you plug it into here, that one's going to be positive, isn't it? Right, okay. Right, before we start messing, let's just see if there's any voltage on that big cap. So these are like axle caps where it's going across the one either side instead of both down at the same, uh, both legs coming out the same side. Nothing there. Nothing there. Right, let's test the actual switch itself. Maybe it's dirty. So when we press this in, this turns on. So where would I have to go across? Should I try here? This is nothing there. Right, okay, so the live is making a contact. Is this making a contact? Yeah, so it's not going to be the switch, is it? So when we turn it on, we should have 240 volts across here. I don't think we need to do that because we're going to have 240 volts. I wonder where the actual input comes into the board. Let's turn it over and see if we can find out, you know, where the voltage is actually going. The sort of the, the, the first traces. How do I take this out? Right, I've got to pinch these. It's nice that they give you plenty of warnings anyway on both sides, top and bottom. Okay, so we have, what do we have? Do you reckon there's three different inputs coming in here? That's why we've got three different bridge rectifiers? Do you know what? I'm really not used to working with linear power supplies, so uh, I'm not too sure, really, what's going on. So this is the primary. So we've got 200 volts or 200 volts. So I presume you have to bridge would you have to bridge something for the 100 volts or solder them up differently? Uh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. So, hold on. 240 volts, you're going to go here and here, which we've got. 100 volts, you're going to go here and here. Right. Primary, primary, in. So these are the secondary. So these are the outputs here, aren't they? And it does look like we have three different outputs. So that goes to one lot two lots and is this still in here oh this is through the capacitors then 12 volts here so where are the bridge where are the bridge rectifiers here bridge rectifiers are here so i suppose if we went on here it would be ac and if we went on here this would be the uh this would be the dc right well i think Please don't copy what you see in these videos. I'm going to keep my hands well away from here. I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to see if I have voltage on the DC side of things. So I'm going to be checking here, here, and here. I'm just a bit confused why there's three. Oh no, sorry. Look, there is only two contacts, but then it goes down to here as well. So it's, uh, and these two contacts are linked. So again, these are going to be, this is a negative here, and that's the positive there. Yeah. Right, let's do that. I'm not going to do anything that I think is unsafe to myself, but it might well be unsafe. So don't copy what you see. I am not going to be touching this board with my hands. I'm just going to be probing these points here and then I'm going to unplug it and I'm going to wait for a while before I start working on it again. So I'm plugging it in now and I'm going to turn it on at the front. So now we should have 240 volts AC coming in to... Uh, I didn't really check on the other side. Would it be these two? Would it be these two here? These two bits? Anyway, let's not worry about that. Let's go straight to DC. And let's check on here. So, here and here. Right, and I don't have anything, do I? So there's nothing there. Okay. Now I'm going to go on to here. And I don't have anything there. And now I'm going to go on to here. And I don't have anything there. Okay. Right, so now I'm going to unplug it. And I'm just going to leave it a while in case those capacitors have got charge in there. 
And uh, would you know what? The capacitors are not going to have charge because they didn't get that far. The capacitors are here, aren't they? So really it should be safe to work on straight away because there's no charge even getting to those capacitors. So now, why is that? Let's have a look at the circuit. I'm wondering in this instance, has the main transformer gone? So I am unplugged. I'll tell you what we'll do. So let's go onto the probes at the back here and let's see. So this one here is the negative. I think it says in. So, oh. What is going on? So there's nothing there. Right, let's go on to the live. Right, so live's going through, but negative is not. What? Negative's not, but yet that is linked. No, sorry, what the, what? Hold on, I'm confused now. Why have we got more contacts on that switch? What's going on? Oh, it's got a few. <laughs> There's a fuse. Look, do you see this circuit? See this one here? There's no fuse on that on the output yet. And can you see there's just three terminals? But look down here, I didn't spot that. There's more than three terminals. There's three terminals up top, but then there's two terminals at the bottom. There's a fuse. I think the fuse is blown. Now normally that would be a very boring one, but in this instance, I don't think it is a boring one. Because I've, I've never seen that before. The fuse is gone. I can see it's cloudy. Look. Can you see it's cloudy? So, how do I take this out? What are you supposed to be? I don't think I've got any glass fuses. Do you know what? I've got some glass fuses from... Uh, I remember getting them from Maplin years ago. I wonder if I could find them. So they are 250 volts. T... 63 milliamps, so 63 milliamps, 250 volts, 63 milliamps. Right, okay, okay, let's get the uh, meter on continuity. Yeah, it's gone. Right, I'm not gonna have them, but I do have some glass fuses. Let's, let me see what they are. Uh, I can order them up. Also, we need to look at why, what's happening down here in this corner. So this must be to save the, the memory of the, the radio. You know, when you do your presets. Right, let me see if I've got any of those fuses. Well, I managed to find them, but annoyingly they're two amp, quick acting two amp. And this one here is T, T stands for slow blow. But anyway, I need a 63 milliamp, not a two amp, so they're no good, but they are the right size. But I've gone onto good old eBay, and uh, yeah, sure enough, here we have them. 10 slow blow, blow fuses. I'm going for the 63 milliamp one, so I'll get 10 of them for three pounds. 84. Size of them is 20 mil by 5 mil, and that's 20 mil by 5. So I'm going to order them up. And I was having a look at the batteries. It looks like you can get the batteries. They are 12.99. So I think I'm going to. Well, we'll measure this one. But that, they're rechargeable batteries. They must have. Uh, that must have died by now. And to me, it looks like it's leaked out quite a lot. I'll tell you what. Out of curiosity, let's see if there's any voltage left in it whatsoever. Well, look at that. There's still something in there. Let's go into that leg there. Yeah, so the top two must be positive. Right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna risk putting a two amp fuse in there because obviously this is an expensive bit of kit and uh, there might be sensitive stuff here that would blow if there's some other fault. I'm gonna have a look at the other two because we know they come alive when you press the button. And let's see if they are also 63 milliamp fuses. I should have just used my eyes. It clearly says here, fuse T2A. Fuse T63 milliamps, so it definitely is supposed to be 63 milliamps, but it means I'll be able to take the one out of this one to get this one working down here and see what's happening. And this one says T63 milliamps, and as you can hear there, it's working. I want to see what's happening with the different voltages, because that's quite interesting, so there must be different windings on that one given different voltages. Well, I'm plugging it in again now. Please don't bang. Okay, so remember something might have blown the fuse, so there might still be an issue with this. Right, I'm gonna turn it on now. I'm looking away just in case it does explode. Right, no, still no power. What's that about? 
Have I blown the fuse again? Let's see if the fuse is blown again. Let's see, has that blown again? I bet it has. Yeah. Oh no. No, it's not. Right. So there's still no power. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Right, okay, pop it back in. Try again. Alright, let's check for AC. So, turn it on. Oh, I've got a light. Maybe, ah, it's working. Do you know what? I reckon it just took a little bit of time. Can you see? I want to be careful because this is on. There you go, look. I think it just took a bit of time to charge up the capacitors and stuff. You know, if it hasn't been on in ages. Yeah. Right, let's take the board out and see what's going on with that leakage around the thing. Does it tune? Right, hold on, tune. Yeah, it does, yeah. That button's a bit sticky. Yeah, it's not really moving much. Here, it's still it's 108 on everything. But maybe, do you know what? All the channels have been lost, haven't they? I suppose this is just what it give you an indication to tune to BBC One, Two, Three. I think that's it. Right, okay. Let's. Uh, we definitely need one of those batteries then. I'll. Uh, let's just see the damage around the board there. So I wonder what blew that fuse. Maybe it was a surge. A surge coming into it. Right, I'm going to get my desolder station on and we're going to remove this battery here. Then we'll have to clean the whole area with uh, some white vinegar and IPA. You can actually see this side here looks ever so slightly corroded just here. But it looks alright. So it might be quite bad on top when we take the battery off. Also, these buttons seemed a bit hard to press. So I think they're going to need a bit of a clean. They didn't seem very responsive. So... How do we take this one out? There we go. So it's on some ribbon cables, but they're all soldered onto the board. So now, what happens with these here? can prise them off from here, the side. Oh, that's clever. Did you see that? Look how they've done it. Right. Can you see? We've got a little clicky thing, and we've got like a carbon washer or something. And the carbon washer just does the two pads, goes across here. Can you see there? So that's how it shorts out those two bits there. And that's like a, a clicky thing. Yeah, so I suppose that would get quite... Uh, yeah, they are. They're black. Look. Look here. Can you see this one? There, see it coming up shiny? Now, I wonder, do these need cleaning, or do they just, uh, is that what they were always like, or should these be like copper? Oh no, look at that side. What? Look how oxidised that's got. No way. Let me just see, is that still conducting? Right, so let's bring this one in, but this is just for the click. Right, so... Going in. No, look at that. I'm pressing quite hard on that. Yeah, now let's go on to a bit that I've cleaned. So you can hear it there. Then when I go here. Hmm, not all over, look there. See, it's okay here. 
but not there. Yeah, I think they all need to be cleaned. Right, I'll do that in a minute because that's going to take quite a while to take them all off. Let's just desolder this battery first of all. Very satisfying using that. Now, are you going to come off or are you going to be uh, welded on? There, so you can see it was this side here that leaked, the negative side. All down here is all leaked. But luckily, it's a massive track, so it shouldn't really cause much damage. But that will all need to be cleaned up. So, let's. Uh, get some white vinegar, spray it on there. Oh, I've just found a spring as well, I've got to be really careful. So it's not just those two bits, there's also a spring, that spring must go on here. Go on here. I need to take off another button and see exactly how it's made, and then I'll know how to put it back. But do you know what, I might be asking for trouble there, because if I lose one of those springs, the button's not gonna work properly then. Uh, but you've seen how, how uh, corroded, not corroded, but how oxidized it is in there. Really, they do need to work, don't they? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to take the risk. Let me clean up this to begin with. So I'm using white vinegar on here. Now, I presume that these batteries have some sort of alkaline in them. So the vinegar is an acid, so it's going to neutralise what's on the board. But, you know, this leakage might have happened many, many years ago. But I'm going to put white vinegar over it all, give it a good scrape, try to get rid of some of the corrosion, clean it all with IPA to then get rid of the white vinegar, so that's clean it with isopropyl alcohol. And then once we've kind of scraped it back, I'm going to have to then put a new coating on it, otherwise the copper's going to oxidise again. But luckily in this area here, it's just a massive, I presume, a ground plane. So it's not... Uh, it's not really going to affect anything because you see grain's going to be in loads of other parts of the board so the components can get their ground from another part of the board because it's all linked via loads of different paths. So really, it's the best place it could have possibly leaked. You can definitely see a bit of a green tinge on there. So on the car it was said that these were supposed to be, I think it was 10 year serviceable items. So if your car's older than 10 years old and they've never had these replaced and they need replacing, so obviously it's a known issue that they do leak. That was with Rolls-Royce. So I presume it's the same with these things as well. But saying that, even if they were to leak bad, it wouldn't really matter too much up here because of the ground plane. But I suppose it could work its way through here, couldn't it? And then start eating it. It wouldn't take much to eat away these traces. Right, I'm going to get a little fiberglass pen or a brass pen and I'm just going to scrape away all that old horrible solder mask on, on top, get it looking nice again. So while I'm scrubbing away the corrosion with a brass bristle brush, let's uh, sounds like a basil brush. Let's give a shout out to the my mate Vince Massive. So the members this month are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, having fun repairs, Will McAlis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeeps.com, DJVG, Pigsy, Robert from Timsey's Auto Wear, Daniel Watson, Zeke C, Anthony Dean, Bazard 2, Operational 117, Russ Melanson, Save Our Stuff, and Hunter short so we should have enough scrubbing done now so now let's get a close look and see how it's looking right so i'm gonna have to put some solder mask on that so that's going to take a long time to do uh i'm gonna it's the, the uv light is going to get in my way with the torch so let's do that at the end let's take off these some of these and let's see if let me just take a picture so i know where to put the buttons back let's see if i can take the other one off so i can see in what orientation the spring and the contact and stuff goes. I'm going to try to take this one off really carefully. You know, I'm worried, I'm worried that these are going to break. See, really it was only that one that seemed to be a bit stubborn. Let me try, yeah. Uh, see, I don't want, if I break them, I've had it. Plastic's going to be getting old. 
Let me see if I can just take off one more and we'll see the condition of this one. Right, so it hasn't springed out yet. Here we go, ready? Now, let's see the order of it. So we have that. There, right, okay, and the spring there, fine. So we now know the order of it. This goes on top. Domed, you know, domed like this. Then we have this one here. Now is this one clean? No, it's not. It's not clean. But you know what I could do? Instead of cleaning them, I could just turn them the wrong way around. And then you see we've got the fresh side there, because it doesn't matter, this side's just clicking. It's the contacts here that need to make the good connection. Right, I know I said I hate fiberglass pens, but it probably will be good for cleaning up there. So I could put deoxit in it, but it's still not going to be as good as actually cleaning it if it's already tarnished. I don't think, anyway. Right, so you see they're nice and shiny now. Let's give that a clean. Right, so we'll put the spring in. Then we're going to put this on, but we're going to put the clean side down. And then this goes on top of that domed, yeah? This is going to be awkward. Do you know what? Maybe I have to put it on this side first. So, domed side on first. That way. Like that. Then this side. Clean side here. Like that. And then that all clips onto there. I wonder is that going to work? Let's see. Well, do you know what? Oh, no. Oh, here it is. Yeah, sorry, you do it this way, don't you? It's much easier like that. And then with the spring on the lid. Now we just have to clip that back down. There we go. Right, let's see if we have continuity. And that's nice and responsive. So there's eight of these in total, so we've got another seven to do. So fingers crossed when I'm unclipping them, the spring doesn't fling out across the room. I think it is worth doing these ones. I mean, most of them did seem to be working, but the top one was definitely stubborn. You had to press it a few times to, to make it work, so I think it is worth it. Thing is, I'm a bit confused why one side of the disc is completely new, and then the other side is completely oxidized. Has it had some sort of reaction with the two contacts on the actual switch because it's just it's just a bit bizarre part of me wonders whether or not it's been done on purpose i mean would it last longer if they've put some sort of coating on it you know like you you have like carbon contacts and uh they're hardened aren't they and i'm just thinking have they done some sort of coating on this or really has it just got oxidized throughout the years if you could put that down into the comments below because i'd like to think that originally both sides of the disc were that shiny silver and throughout time one size oxidized i'm just a bit confused you think the oxidization would also have spread onto the other side as well so yeah i mean if we've got a continuity i'm sure it will work fine it's just part of me now is wondering whether or not maybe it was designed to have that dirty side against the contacts because maybe it's less likely to oxidize if they've already put a coating on it. Not too sure. If you could put it down into the comments down below, I would be grateful. Right, so I found a battery online here, 1295. In fact, it says a seller you've bought from before because this would have been one that I got for the Rolls Royce, so I knew I recognized it. So this is 4.8 volts. It says 4.8 volts here. Now this is 100 milliamp hours. This one here, I think it said it was 150 milliamp hours, but that's fine. And it just means that basically it's going to be able to output 4.8 volts for longer. And if you have a look at the size, 23.7, that looks like it's roughly 23.7. And then we've got 26.8. Oops, 26.8. Again, that looks like it is roughly 26.8. 
and 15.3. So it looks to be exactly the same one. So I'm going to buy that one. So now I'm just going to give these buttons a nice clean up and I'm also going to clean up the case where the buttons go through and that way then there's going to be no stickiness or anything. Right, while I've got the wet wipes out, I'm just going to give it a quick rub down. Right, there goes the IPA, that's a surprise. Right, we're in there. And now... Let's see what's going to happen. Is it going to come to life straight away? Yes, it is. Excellent. Right. So. Oh, yes. Look at that. How easy are they to press now? Look, I'm barely tapping them. Now, is it changing here? It's not. So let's go to something here. Right. So I can't change it because it's on that. So that's quite clever. I don't know if you can even make that out. You probably can't. There, you can see it there, right? So let's go to tune. And now this should allow me, yeah, I can see it's changing now. You should, yeah, you can just see that. Let's just go to 100. Now, let's see if we can do that as number one. No, so you must have to hold down tune. Oh no, so it's gone to there. So tune, one, will that keep it there? Yes, it will, yes, it's working, look. 100. Well, it's gone to 95. Tune, 100. Why does it keep jumping to that, I wonder? Why does it go down one? Let's see what happens if we go to 101. Let's see if it jumps down one from that. So tune. Isn't that weird? It jumps down by 0 0.5, 0 0.05. What's that about? Right, let's go to tune and go to 102. So how sensitive is it? Yeah. Right, so that's just barely 102. Tune. <laughs> 10195. That's really, really bizarre. So let's say if we wanted to go to 103, I'm going to go to 103.5. There. Now, let's see if that will set as 103. Yeah, it does. So now look, 101, 95, 103. So you've just got to go five more. But that's a bit odd. I wonder, is that some sort of like capacitor related issue? It's not a problem because you just set it five more anyway. Right, that appears to be working. But if we were to turn it off and then back on, I presume then it's not going to remember those settings. No, can you see it's just 10108? Yeah, so it doesn't remember settings. And that's what you need the battery for. Brilliant, okay. Right, well, obviously I don't know if it's fully working, but it looks like it is working. So when the battery arrives and the uh, fuse arrives, then I can put them all back together and uh, sort it out. Let's just put a little bit of solder mask on this now. All right, so I'm putting on some of this. Now a little goes a long way, that will actually do the whole thing down there. Right, I'm going to add some hot air and this at the same time. The hot air is only going to be at 100 degrees, it will just help it go off quicker because there's quite a bit here. Obviously I'm not putting it anywhere near these ribbon cables here. Right, I'm going to rest that there and then just move it along, move it along, move it along and hopefully in about 15-20 minutes it will be done. So I'm going to relax now and have a nice drink for myself. Okay, you can see now that's all gone a different colour. So that's going to protect the board from oxidising further. So once I get the battery from eBay, I'll plonk it in here, solder it up and then all I've got to do is put the fuse when they arrive in the other one 
and then I can connect it all up and try to get some sound out of it. So for you, you'll see this in a few seconds, but for me, it will be a few days time. Ah, oh, today is a good day. My little rechargeable batteries arrived, my fuses have arrived, so I can pop them in and hopefully, fingers crossed, it will all be working. Right, so remember I have to put the fuse in the other one because I nicked it for this one here, but look, this is quite clever. You do put the fuse in there when it's in operation, but look at this. You can put a spare fuse in this bit here. Isn't that nice? So you don't have to go looking for your fuses. Well, let's see if this is gonna fit in here or when I have to move the little things around a bit. No, that fit, oh my word, it fits. Wow, look at that. Lovely. Right, let's just put a little bit on my soldier nine to begin with. And try to put a tiny bit on just to hold it in place. There we go, now I should be able to do it properly. Lovely. Lovely. Oh, look at those joints there. How nice do they look? Look at them here, they look perfect, don't they? There we go, right. And it's when I put it into the back that it gets done up with these screws here. So, I'll tell you what, let's not, uh, I mean, I could, I could see if it's gonna hold the memory, but let's get it all connected up now, change the filming location, and then now uh, I'm not gonna clean the rest of it, because Rob can do that himself, but I'm just gonna rub a wet wipe just over them, just so my hands don't get too dirty. And uh, yeah, let's see if it's all working. I'll try to wire it up properly. I'll also try to get some sort of speaker system wired up so we can get some sort of sound out of it. Thing is, I haven't got an aerial, but maybe I can use a bit of foil or something to try to get something. So uh, yeah, leave it with me. Next time you see this, it will be ready to test. Vince from the future jumping in here and this video was already done and released to the Patreons as a completed video but a couple of issues came up and it meant that I can deal with it early enough to not have to do a revisit video. So the video you're seeing now is the live video on YouTube, but I've already been helped out by the Patreons, which is really good. So there's two people I wanna thank. The first one is Jessica V, because she told me that the old battery that I took out was a NICAD, and the one that I was putting in, this one here, is, if you have a look here, it says N, I M H and that is a nickel metal hydrate battery. They're different, it's like a different chemical makeup on the inside. So she said I need to be you know careful. She said it probably will be okay, but uh, it depends on the charging circuit. Now that got me a little bit worried, but looking up, I actually bought the battery on eBay that was listed for a quad FM4. These ones here are the ones that people are replacing the NICAD ones with. But you can't just swap them over willy-nilly in other devices because the charging circuit is made for a NICAD and not a nickel metal hydrate. But apparently it's fine because these look like they're a direct replacement when people are buying them nowadays. I don't think you can get the NICAD ones anymore. Also, there's some modification that you can get that does away with the battery completely. And also it gives you more presets. I think somebody said it costs 40 or 50 pounds. So, you know, that's something to look into if you've got one of these and it's your pride and joy and you don't wanna have to worry about messing around with this battery. The other thing, more importantly in this instance, is a message came through from Eakin63 and he said that the reefer cap is known for going short circuit. Now the reefer cap is this little thing down here and when I tapped it a minute ago, the actual cover came off. I mean, I know I've seen it was crusty before, but the uh, outer cover here really is flaky. If you have a look at it, can you see it also looks like it's bulged here. Now, I googled it and apparently these are known for failing and guess what? they're known for blowing the internal fuse here. So I thought maybe the fuse blew because it was a surge coming from this way, but it's much more likely now that this has failed and it blew the fuse. Apparently it's not that important. It's for like filtering. I think it's known as a snubber capacitor. But anyway, I bought a replacement one. So I just typed again, reefer cap, quad FM4. This one came up. So you can see here, safety capacitor, class uh, X2 suppressor, and it's 47 nanofarads. 
plus 100R. I don't understand about reefer caps, but they're not polarity conscious, so you can put them in either way round, because remember, this is AC coming in here, so it can go either way, it doesn't matter. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna swap that over now, put it back together, and then we can go back to the original video for the testing. This reefer cap here was only about four or five pound, including delivery, so it's not expensive. There we go, that's dropped right through. And that's the old one there. Let's just see if it is actually short circuit. You can really see that it's, oh look at that. It's popped there in the middle, hasn't it? Check that out. Oh, thank you, Eakins. Yeah, look. So I presume it's probably not shorted, but I reckon when it blew, this is what blew the fuse. Yeah, so it's completely open now, but it mustn't be working as a capacitor at all. Yeah, well, it's completely, uh, completely open. Let's see if we get any reading from it. Oh, fair play, we still do get a reading, 5.9 nanofarad, uh, but it's supposed to be 47. Well, anyway, you can see that it doesn't, it doesn't look healthy. Whether it was working or not, it doesn't look healthy. I think this is what blew the, uh, the fuse. Right, let's pop our nice new one in. Polarity again doesn't make a difference because it's AC. There we go. And that looks nice. You know what? I'm just going to put it in the other way because it make it easier to read in future. Nice. Let's solder that in. There we go. And now let's just clean up our work. And snip the ends off. That actually says FM4 there. Right, okay, so that's us uh, done. Let's uh, get back to the original video. So massive thank you to Eakins and Jessica for that there, because it saved me doing a revisit video and it's much better for people watching it. So uh, yeah, thank you so much. In a way, it's kind of like doing a live stream where people can correct you as you go along. So uh, yeah, thank you. Sorry, Vince from the future again. I just noticed on the back here, I didn't notice that before, it says two box. And then I had a look on the other ones and it says three box on the top one. So I presume the bottom one says one box. So Rob, that must have been your dad that wrote that. My, oh my, it sounds crisp and clean. Move over, Bangal Olufsen. This thing sounds amazing. Now, it could be because I'm using Bang & Olufsen speakers. I've got another video coming up. I've been meaning to do it for months now, but I went to the charity shop. I got two speakers and the nicest Bang & Olufsen system you've ever seen for a hundred pound. I think the speakers alone would be worth a hundred pound. So uh, yeah, these are Biovox CX100. Now, I presume it's not just the speakers that's making it sound good. It must be this thing here. I've just been listening to a bit of Johnny Cash and it's via YouTube. I presume if you were to listen to something via CD, it would be even better. So I'll show you the radio working in a minute. The radio sounds awful because reception's not good in my area and also I'm using TV rabbit ears there, a pound shop special, but still, I uh, it does tune in so I'll show you it working and also 
it's saving the stations as well. So I've got it turned off at the moment, but it is plugged in. I also unplugged it as well, just in case. And I had it unplugged for five minutes and it saved the stations. I don't know whether it will save them over weeks on end, but certainly short term wise, it saves them anyway. So it looks like the battery's doing its job. It sounds so, so, so clean. I'll try to play some royalty free music at the end. I'm just gonna show you the connections at the back because they're slightly confusing. We have the power in, it doesn't matter where it goes, but I've put it in the bottom one just to keep it neat. And then we've got the out of that power go into the in of the middle one and then the out of that power go into the in of the top one so the top one's the preamp middle one's the radio bottom one's the amplifier i believe that's what it's called now you've got to connect the output of the preamp to the input of the amplifier so i've had to just give rob this lead here this is a nice little auction free copper one twin phono to twin phono or twin rca to twin rca so that goes from the output there to the input down here and then we've got the banana plugs coming out here for your left and right speakers i've just bodged them up here with some tape and wires because the Bang & Olufsen speaker connections connections are different than this one here. Uh, you've got the radio coming out here on the output. That goes to the input on the preamp on the radio. And then on this one where it says CD, you would connect a CD player. In this instance, the lead here that my phone's connected to. This one here, I'm not sure. This is for another input, but it's not actually labeled up what it does. So I don't know what that's about. This one here is for tape. For some reason, there's four of them. Not sure why there's four. It says record and REP don't know what that means and then you've got disc over here disc is actually uh, disc is actually the record player which is kind of weird how it's not called record but it's called disc and uh, yeah that's it so it's kind of straightforward let me actually show you the radio working and then I'll show you some royalty free music so we turn it on 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 now you can hear that that is the left one here Right and that is the right one there and if I go across here you can see it saved the channels from before and it's working okay so now let's pretend we want to tune something on that top one there we'd hit tune you've seen this earlier on anyway and let's go to something it goes across it so nice Right, so let's say if I wanted to save that one there, I would then hold down tune and that one there. And now that is it. So if we go back to here, you will hear it come on. Right, let me get some royalty free music on my phone. So while I'm doing this, I will be kind of doing stuff like this to show you the right and the left. And also we have a tilt thing, which is quite confusing for me because if you do it here, it's plus three here, minus three here. Fair enough, decibels. And then if we do it this way, it's plus three and minus three. The thing is, it doesn't tell you which is bass and treble. And we have bass lift here. Uh, it says Hertz, decibels. Again, don't really know what that means, but I think the more you do it up here, the more bassy it gets. But now I will be able to play you this song here. Here we go, you ready? Let's put a bit of volume on it. microphone around so you can hear me it sounds just
crisp, like, you know, you can hear the individual sounds. It sounds really, really good. If you've got one of these, you now know to open it up and have a look at that battery. And if it hasn't leaked, maybe change it anyway if it looks old. But maybe just like, you know, what, what are they, about 12, 13 pounds? Maybe it's worth just changing a battery because it's a very good piece of kit and it's still an expensive piece of kit, so it's worth looking after. So that is it. I'm just going to play you out now with a different bit of royalty-free music and let the credits roll at the end. A massive thanks to Rob for sending this out to me and a massive thanks to John as well for getting me this item. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. my head.